Welcome back to another episode of the Hustle Nation podcast. Today, we've got a real treat. We're going to talk about taking action and stop fucking delaying. And uh, really where this all came about was I was at a conference the other day and Dustin, you and I were, were talking offline and it's kind of where this whole idea came from was um, I, I was speaking for about 90 minutes and then after I had a long line of people and there were a few folks at a table that were just getting their coats on and they were ready to, to walk out. And I'm like, hey, hey, hey you, get, you guys still have a minute. I know you had some questions. And this, this gal who I, I did know a little bit, let's call her Susan. She says to me, and I'm going to take a step back and say the context of the presentation was digital marketing, how to bootstrap your marketing in a way that is simple, easy, cost effective if you have limited resources. And she has not yet in her probably 15 years of business posted a vertical video, TikTok or Reel. And she is relatively savvy when it comes to marketing. And when we were sitting down, she kept asking questions. and. It was almost like she had asked the same question three or four different times. It was, but Chris, what about the length? So it doesn't matter. She said, well, what's the perfect length? There is no perfect length. Well, what length should my videos be? Doesn't matter. Well, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts on music? Doesn't matter. Um, well, and she's a little older. I think maybe a little self-conscious about being on video, which is totally fair. I said, don't worry about it. Um, what I want you to do is just create the video. And if you really don't want your face to be in it, eventually I'm going to push you to do that though, by the way, um, just do a voiceover. And if you're savvy enough to make it, that, that's sufficient to, to get going. And then it was, well, but Chris, well, what do you think? And how about this? And I said, Susan, stop. Just stop right now. Here's what I want you to do. I want you within the next week and by, by the time the weekend's over, I want you to have created and posted one Facebook reel, or maybe it's a TikTok or YouTube short, whatever. Post it to all the platforms if you do that. And I, I want you to email me on Monday, because I'm going to be gone, by the way. And I want you to, to tell me that you did it. And I'm going to be your accountability partner. And up until I said that, it was, well, you know, I'll do some research or I'll do some reading on Google or, you know, let me look at the best apps for editing. And I said, no, stop. Don't, don't do any of that. And it takes me back to a book I read called Ready, Fire, Aim. And without going into that rabbit hole, I just said, you need to take action. You're, you're thinking too much and you're getting worried. And when you stop to think and stop to worry, fear sets in. And that is when we stop taking action. And the only way for you to learn, Susan, is you have to do the thing. And I pointed out early in our workshop that you and I have been on this podcasting journey now for a little over a year, probably closer to a year and a half now. We're 50 some episodes in. And while I've had a podcast before this, I thought it would be so easy and seamless. And looking back at our first couple episodes, I was like, boy, that's not very good on my behalf. And things have progressively gotten better, but only because of repetition and at bats. And so I told her that. I said, don't worry about it. There is no such thing as perfect. Um, it's only going to get better, but it's only going to get better if you keep keep trying. But if you keep trying to perfect it before you launch one, we're going to be three years from now and you're going to be telling me the same thing. And so for those of you listening, um, I, I just say exactly what I said to Susan, which is stop and just fucking take action. I don't normally don't swear a lot on this podcast, but that, that is a big thing that seems to come up a lot, not only in the marketing world, in the business world, in the leadership world. People read and read and read and hope that they're going to refine this skill, but you're only going to refine the skill by doing the actual thing. Dustin, what do you think about that? What, what's your thoughts on this subject? You're, you're 100% right. I see it constantly. I actually have uh, a couple different situations that in just the last week even this happened, but I think the one of the challenges you know what causes the inaction i think so often people want to justify the inaction by well i want to think about this or i want to think about that or i want to research this i want to research that when in reality uh one of the stories uh, that that just came up in the last week uh, we had a, a sales kickoff with our with our team and uh we brought in steve jones who was on this podcast and, you know, he was talking about the twin thieves, right? The fear of failure and the fear of judgment. And in many cases, those are the things 
that cause us to have inaction. And uh, since then, I probably had five or six conversations with different uh, members of our team, really challenging that, right? Because a lot the the common question I heard back from that is, well, I understand the fear of failure and the fear of judgment, but shouldn't sh- isn't that a good thing? Isn't that something that then allows me to be better at my craft? you know, clarify what am I doing, right? And and be more thoughtful about the action that I'm taking. And it, it's it's interesting because in, in each one of those conversations, one of the things that I've seen is if if the the those twin thieves, right? If if you use the the fear of failure and the fear of judgment to create thoughtful action, then that's one thing. But if it's really just to go do more research or try to do the thing if it's preventing you from doing the thing, that's really where the problem is. And, you know, to your, your, your story is, is right on it. You know, it's, it's so similar to what we hear from so many people, which is really what it comes down to is I'm, I'm, I'm fearing doing the thing. And in many cases, I think it's because we're comparing our first quarter to someone else's fourth quarter, <laughs> right? We, we look yeah. at people and say, man, they are so good at this. And I, I don't know, there's no way that I can be good. Well, yeah, if, as an example of Chris, you talk about our podcasts, the first one we did was awful. Each one we do, we're getting slightly better. Now, those that have done, you know, we've had some of these guests on, the, uh, on our podcast, those that have done thousands of episodes in the last 10 years, they're far better than we are. Yeah. And that's, that's part of the process. The process is, just starting to do the thing is what gets you better. Well, uh, in, in my business, you know, I've been in sales for a very long time. And when I get, you know, new salespeople into our company, a lot of them, you know, I'll go into a meeting and they'll be like, wow, it just seems like, you know, exactly what is going to happen next. So like, it has nothing to do with my skill or intelligence or anything. I've just been on thousands of those meetings in our industry with that type of business. And so I can anticipate some of the things that are going to be concerns and questions that they have. Once you're on a hundred of them, 200 of them, you're going to be 90% the same. And so I I agree. I think usually the number one gap between someone achieving their goals and not is not tactics. It's not strategy. It is just action. And I'll tell you what, too. I, I don't know that if I'm someone's boss, and they're, it's their first time, in Susan's case, creating a vertical video, or maybe in your case, I don't expect perfection. I don't even expect great. I, I'm just hoping for your best. And I'm going to go back to another story, <clears throat> which is writing a book. And I've written a book, written my, written my second. We've got one going in the mix, too. I've known a lot of friends who have published books. And so often, it is there's no action. Meaning they might get this manuscript fully written. And then it's, well, I found this new thing to add to it. Well, um, I had an editor read it and then they suggested I do this. Well, I had another editor read it and they suggested this. My friend said that was bad. So, you know, it just keeps changing. In my, and, you know, in my journey, when I wrote my first book, it took me 10 years. Now, I have some pretty legitimate excuses from moving a couple times, changing careers, getting married. Um, having very severe health issues. And at the end of the day, the book was basically ready for half of that time. And what I tell people is that some of the best books in the world, especially textbooks, have seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 revisions. Get the fucking thing published and you can always improve upon it. And that's what's great. And you can even rebrand it. You can put a new cover, put a new name on it if it just takes on a whole new identity. But if you've put your heart and soul into a project, or maybe you've put your heart and soul into Susan's case of learning how to do this, just start putting content out there. Because it really comes down to the twin thieves, especially when it comes to being vulnerable and putting yourself on video or like we're doing in this podcast. It is the the fear of failure and the fear of judgment. But if you're like me or like you and you really don't worry a whole lot about that, you just have to take action. Because I look back at a lot of things that, that I have some small regrets on, like you know, creating a personal brand, which is not something just because you're in marketing you should do or just because you're a CEO you should do. It has a lot of benefits. And for, for many, many years, I was just kind of a private person. I didn't love sharing 
a lot of my personal things, a lot of my accomplishments, didn't ever want people to interpret me as arrogant. And so I finally just came to the realization a couple of years ago that I really need to double down. And in the last year, I've quadrupled my following on LinkedIn. I've generated probably five times more leads and sales than I ever had from social media. And it wasn't from the advertising. It was from me being visible. And kind of where I'm going with all of that is I should have taken action sooner. I wish I would have. And I don't want people, um, and, and being someone who is a coach, a consultant, I, I don't want people to ever have to say that because I've said that enough. I know what it feels like. I have friends and family who have said that. I know what it feels like for them. And that is something we can all change. We all have complete control of. So whether you're looking to publish a book, you're looking to make some video, maybe you're thinking about going back to school to get your MBA, jump in the deep end. And I'm, I'm going to throw one more story at you. And a lot of times with my marketing, what I tell people is that the reason a lot of what you're doing doesn't work is because you're being a toe dipper. And I've got this awesome picture in the slide deck. And it's a picture of a woman probably at a hotel pool just barely dipping her toe in the pool and that the common answer is, Oh, I tried the water. It's too cold. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to go in. But the, the real answer is if you want to have fun or maybe you want to swim some laps, just jump in the deep end and start swimming because that is the only way it, it's going to work. And so often people say, well, I tried Facebook ads. It doesn't work. Okay. Well, it's because maybe you didn't try it long enough. wasn't a big enough budget. I go on and on and on, but you can't dip your toe. If you're going to write a book, you got to jump in the deep end. You got to dedicate time and effort to the manuscript. And you have to set a date to get the damn thing done. Just like I did with Susan in her video is I said, here's what I want you to do. And I think what's going to happen is that you're going to feel this sense of accomplishment after you've done it because you had to, you had to hurdle the fear. You had to hurdle the fear of judgment. And when you get there, you're like, oh, a little pat on the back for me. I think that's cool. I finally did the thing I've been wanting to do for so long. And then, you know, when you do 10, 12, 14, 15 of them, all of a sudden you get this momentum, you get some confidence. You're like, oh, maybe this is paying dividends. And then, you, then you send me a thank you note for just all I did was encourage you to do the thing. And it's amazing when you do the thing, how you feel at the end. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think... What, you know, what are the other reasons people don't take action? One of the most basic things I've seen that has prevented people from taking action is they don't know what the next step is. And sure. I'll, even, even for myself, right? You know, for anyone that, you know, you have a variety of things coming at you in life, right? And when the, when the next step is not clearly defined, and as dumb as that sounds, far too often people don't take the 30 seconds that it'll take to figure out, okay, this is the thing I need to do, right? And most people look at it as, okay, I need to clean my house, right? Well, no, you don't. You, you, need, you need to do the next room, right? You need, and it's the step, right? Or I need to create a video. Well, yeah, you, 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 you do. You have to, what is your topic? Press record. And as dumb as it sounds, just defining what those next steps are and writing them down liberates you so many in so many ways. Now, the other part is sometimes you don't know what the next step is, right? So Chris, you know, in, in your story, yeah. you know, this person clearly wanted to take action, right? This, this person wasn't just afraid of doing anything, right? They wanted to take action. They just didn't know what really the next action needed to be. And, you know, I think in a lot of ways, this is a great example of why in today's world, if you're not learning from others, right? We talk about the Ellen hustle. Yeah. If you're not finding mentors, finding coaches, there are times when the next step is just in us and we just need to create space to define, okay, what is my thing? This is the next step. Don't worry about the next 10 steps. Just do the next step. That creates action that'll get you one step closer to the 10 steps. And if you don't, if you truly are looking at it and say, I don't even know what the next step is, that's where go, go find somebody, go find a mentor, find a coach, find somebody that has been there, done that, that can help you define this is the next step. And now I'm just going to take. I think though, Dustin, a lot of times after you've completed the first step, you are so much closer to knowing what the next step is. 
Mm -hmm. Um, because as you're taking action, your gears are turning. You're, I think that there's this creative energy, this excitement, this enthusiasm. And so often that is what helps us inch closer and continue in, to inch closer to that second step if we don't know what it is. But when you say that, um, about not knowing the second step, that takes us back to a conversation we've had recently and probably will continue to have a lot, which is, um, having a strategy. And that is a big part of that slide deck that I referenced with the toe dippers is it all goes back to having a plan. Um, I often in marketing refer to it as a recipe, which is interchangeable for strategy, game plan. You know, as we approach the NFL, we've got playoffs coming up as we record this episode. You know, how many of the coaches are going into a playoff game without a detailed game plan and a detailed game plan that not only is everyone coalesced on, everybody is aware of and they understand their assignments. And so, for us, just at, a, at an individual level or career level or both, I think you need a planner. You really need to write that down. And it's not just I'm writing it down in my notebook that you and I do. It is writing it down in some form of a journal or daily planner. And I don't think your Google calendar or your iOS calendar account for that. I mean, what are your, your big three objectives? Because if that is written down once a week, every week for the next four or five weeks, the probability of you tackling that vertical video that I talked about with Susan, I I'm going to guess is probably a almost 100% higher than what it was when you were just thinking about it and it was weighing on your conscience. Completely agree. Yeah. So I think uh, to me, the biggest thing with taking action is get out of your own head. If you need to take a minute, you know, take a, you know, Take a minute and by minute, that could be a minute. It could be an hour, but it shouldn't be a month, mm -hmm. you know, and, and decide what that next step is in the context of your overall, you know, overall goal, overall strategy and just go. The, the beautiful thing about today in today's world, so many things are easily edited or changed or deleted or improved upon. These are not things that you can't change very, very quickly. So just Try, fail, learn from it, move forward, and just repeat that cycle. Exactly. And you said something we talk about a lot, which is fail. Um, I say this a lot, and some people, I'm, I'm guessing, in fact, I know that there are people who roll their eyes when, when they hear this, but is, I think you need to fail. And I'm, I'm going to tell you from my personal experience, you know, I've only gotten as far as I have, which is nowhere near where I want to be at the end of the day. But um, it, it's because I failed a ton. I mean, I, I've messed up so much stuff. I've failed so many times. And if I look back at the things that I've learned and where I've gotten better, it is exclusively from the L's. I mean, yeah, winning feels good. It boosts your confidence. But how much do you really learn from doing things right? You know, typically when things maybe aren't up to the standard, when they aren't up to your par, people will give you feedback or you'll see feedback maybe through another lens. And that is where you can say, oh, okay, maybe it wasn't a total failure. It wasn't perfect. So I can take this advice and I can use that to improve. And so I just kind of use that mentality that, that I'm always searching for feedback and I'm always trying to get it better. But the big thing is you're only going to get to that point if you just take action. And um, I get the fear of uh, the Twin Thieves is a book I think you should read. If, if this episode has resonated with you, by Steve Jones and Lucas Jaden. That's an awesome book available on Amazon. I also like the book Ready, Fire, Aim. And I think the title of the book, uh, in fewer words, says exactly what you can expect to learn. And that is just start shooting the arrow and you can start w focusing more on your aim after you've shot a few. And th that, that to me is, is bit, was a game changer. Any final thoughts, Dustin? My, my hope is, is hopefully to those that have listened is, is you leave here and take action and not a little bit of action, but massive action. All of our goals are on the other side of production, which is driven by action. Get out of your own way. Take action. Yeah. My final thought is this, you know, I've thought about for probably close to 10 years about writing a marketing book. And you know, having multiple businesses, family, just busy lifestyle, coaching and whatnot, youth sports, I said, what is the only way this is ever going to get done? And 
you know, I did a little bit of research and I said, hmm, voice to text. And so uh, I basically did voice to text and I had my whole book dedicated only a couple hours a week. I had it all done in about six weeks. And that is about 3% of what I invested, probably less than that, um, in the first book. And then I used AI, advanced AI premium tool to help edit that manuscript. And yeah, there's still things to this day I want to edit, but in a matter of probably three to four months, I had a book that is ready to publish. And so there are tools and resources out there. If you say, well, I can't because of this, I can't because of that. Don't let excuses get in the way. And, and as you had mentioned about things being editable, there are so many resources available to us as entrepreneurs and leaders that there's no excuse not to take action. And that's, that's kind of what I love about the digital world that we live in today. Um, so if you're listening to this episode and it resonated with you, I implore you to take some action. Um, thank you for your ears. We appreciate the downloads. We'd be eternally grateful if you would leave us a review on Amazon, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen. Uh, we thankful, we're very thankful for your ears and your downloads. Until next time. Peace.